Hello viewers, I welcome you all from HLDF Tech channel and today we are going to cover a very important video that is for, that may be very beneficial for all the SharePoint administrators who are planning to deploy a SharePoint farm in an in a for large organization in an on-premise environment. As you all know that uh, if we talk about on-premise environment, the SharePoint uh, manages all of its data. Uh, the administrators are responsible for the deployment, configuration, backups and all other activities of SharePoint. It's uh, unlikely uh, similar to that SharePoint Online where uh, you can only uh, need your user ID and you just exploit the features of SharePoint Online. But uh, in on-premise you have a lot more to, more to understand because uh, you are a SharePoint administrator, you are a designer, you are a developer and you are a configuration manager. So this video is equally important for all of those who are going to deploy SharePoint farm in an on-premise environment. On-premise means a farm which is deployed on your own domain or organization. Uh, the deployment, configuration and management of farm rests with the organization. That is, organization has its own, own dedicated SharePoint administrators who are responsible for the deployment, configuration and management of all the farm of SharePoint that is a very um, big form comprising of many uh, servers with dedicated roles we are going to talk about them in our later slides okay license required for deployment form only okay you require SharePoint license for installation only uh, similar to that you also require the SQL Microsoft SQL license because SharePoint on its backend has uh, Microsoft SQL based databases so you need only license for deployment after that you can uh, grant access to your multiple users of your domain okay now sharepoint prerequisites are uh, you must have a domain that is microsoft active directory based ldap that is active directory uh, your old servers which are going to become a part of the farm will be a part of this domain as well okay uh, so let me tell you one more thing because uh, this video is uh, more practical uh, more theoretical and I am going to cover the extract of my practical knowledge here. So I recommend you or I uh, recommend you to listen the facts carefully so that you may have the better understanding of the video. The next thing is that you must have your organizational units in Active Directory which will ultimately become uh, the part of your uh, SharePoint form whenever you will be dealing with the user access permissions as well. Uh, so you may have SharePoint 2019-2022 enterprise setup. You may also have 2016 or 2013 setup as well, but I'm mainly focusing in this current era. I know many organizations have already upgraded their environment to at least 2019 or later. So I will fo uh, majorly focus on uh, these two versions, but this video is equally applicable for the previous versions as well. We have a Microsoft SQL Server 2019 or any later setup uh, with a license. So these are the prerequisites of your SharePoint farm. First of all, you may have, a, you must have a database server because Microsoft SharePoint uh, saves all of its data in Microsoft SQL Server and all its configuration, uh, web settings, data is saved in database server. You may have one or multiple databases. I will tell you details in few minutes. After that. Uh, you may ha you must have a application server at least one whenever you deploy a new SharePoint form the first server of new SharePoint form it is by default uh, created as with a role of application server after that uh, you must have web, web front-end server uh, you, you may have multiple web front-end servers as well I will tell you uh, about this as well you may have you must have a uh, you may have a dedicated search server because in large organizations as soon as the data starts growing and your sharepoint application or form manages millions of documents uh, and uh, all of these documents are saved in sharepoint libraries or document centers then uh, it is very important that you configure or create a dedicated search server so that uh, the it may distribute the load of your search queries as well as the crawler queries of your search administration uh, away from all the web front-end servers <coughs> the next thing is that you uh, 
Microsoft recommends that in larger organizations you may have a dedicated distributed cache server. This server is used for caching services. I will tell you about this as well. So overall this whole uh, portion that is uh, if we talk about the minimum servers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 servers at least are required for making or for creating your site or primary form. Okay, that form that is responsible for uh, entertaining the users for primary request. The next thing is that if we talk about the miscellaneous components, they are optional. Uh, you must uh, you may have a load balancer. It may be a network or software based load balancer because this uh, load balancer is required whenever uh, you have multiple web front end servers. Okay, when, uh, the role of web front ser uh, and server will come in uh, the next slide. I will tell you uh, about this. The, the web front end servers are basically uh, entertaining the user traffic. Okay. So more the web front end servers, more equally the uh, load will be distributed. But the there is a threshold limit after which uh, the distribution uh, due to distribution, the performance decline. Okay. I will also discuss this topic. Network inside tools uh, in my organization uh, in which I work in uh, last year. It was a VMware based cloud. So uh, I had a very essential tool that was very beneficial for me to uh, diagnose or to see the network or the traffic between these servers uh, I was using Verni uh, that was we realized network insights okay that is a tool of VMware uh, it depends upon your organization that which we, uh, tool you are using and through that uh, tool you can identify or uh, see which traffic is being communicated among these servers or from user to the server form okay fine now the next thing is uh, you may have a mailing server because SharePoint uh, doesn't uh, offer you mailing. Uh, you have to configure the email routers, SMTP service. Uh, I have uh, recently created Exchange server in my upcoming videos. I am going to integrate it with SharePoint as well. You may have a Power BI server for graphical reports. It, it, it is a fe feature uh, server because it uh, enhances the feature. It is not the primary response, uh, primary uh, required servers they are just for enhancing the features of your farm now the next thing is that we are going to talk about the server roles e, uh, one by one database server is a microsoft sql based server you must have at least one server that uh, is serving the role of database server in which sharepoint uh, uh, creates a database one thing that is quite important is that sharepoint doesn't save its database in its server it saves all of its configurations as well as its data in database server. So database server is very important for this application. Without the database server, the SharePoint application can't even load the main page of the central admin. So the next thing is that SharePoint application control databases. Uh, it is simple that SharePoint manages and controls and creates its own databases and microsoft recommends that you doesn't interact or manipulate the data or the data structures database structures okay or you can see uh, you can uh, have a, a view command uh, on the databases select that is the select command you uh, must not manipulate the data or the data structures okay you may have primary or you may have multiple databases servers you may have a primary server dedicated database server for your search uh, indexing as well okay this is all mandatory for your large organizations because you know that uh, search itself uh, those users uh, those administrators who have already worked on microsoft sharepoint up to intermediate left uh, level they must know that uh, they must be knowing that uh, the sharepoint uh, takes lot of load that is a lot of processing uh, power of your servers for uh, managing the search service especially its crawlers and for indexing and whenever you are queuing uh, the users are queuing uh, thousands of users are queuing their search then uh, it is always recommended that you separate your database server exclusively for your search databases okay now uh, the next thing is that you must not uh, rely on one complete form you must have a replica of that form that is known as fault tolerance or dr site 
so that in case your primary site fails your fault tolerance or dr site uh, take over the load without dis disturbing the user or without uh, the possibility of data loss okay now the next thing is that the role is sharepoint application server sharepoint application server is a server that is basically responsible for all the sharepoint related jobs that are uh, timer jobs uh, that are load balancer uh, jobs there are security tokens job there are backups job there are many other jobs manage metadata service uh, there is a user profile service uh, load balancer service as well so uh, all of these key related or system related roles are uh, deal by sharepoint application server okay uh, so you may have a dedicated application server or application server with additional roles what are these additional roles uh, if you are working or deploying a form in a smaller organizations or smaller to you can say intermediate level uh, uh, organizations you dip you don't need to deploy uh, to create a separate dedicated server for your search service or distributed cache service alternatively what you do you create a application server with an additional role of search service so that it also uh, takes the load of the uh, search as well if you are dealing with thousands of documents but if your documents are increasing up to millions then uh, there is a case of uh, study and you are at a decisive point to separate your search server now the next thing is that application server deals with the system functions and form functions now the next role is sharepoint web front end server okay now web front end server means uh, by its name uh, you can just uh, realize that it is for entertaining the user request all the users that are queuing any uh, that are interacting with the sharepoint application that is your web application uh, they are their request are entertained by sharepoint web front end servers okay uh, so this structure greatly reduce the load on the application server it results that the application is now free for doing all system related task and the web front end server is dedicated to handle the client request okay in this way you can greatly optimize the performance of your farm your uh, minimum one max minimum one uh, server is required uh, for your farm deployment you may have a uh, all in one server but uh, uh, that is used for uh, development purpose not for production environments maximum you can have five to six servers recommended are two okay uh, maximum uh, maximum servers are five to six servers and the recommended servers uh, web front end servers in any site are two after increasing because two web front end servers are uh, sufficient to handle thousands of requests per minute okay they will just distribute it among uh, if there are thousand requests coming and you are uh, deploying two web front end servers it means that 500 requests will be entertained by web front end server one and 500 requests uh, approximately will be handled by another server so uh, add adding one web front end minimize the load up to 50 percent if you are adding the second web front end server okay it means that you are minimizing the load of first web front end server up to 50 percent you may have additional role for distributed cache okay that's fine web front end servers have some role of distributed cache as well but in large organization what you do you separate the caching service okay you separate the cache service of the organization uh, of your uh, farm so that web front end servers only deal with the client request and the server with a dedicated role of distributed cache deals with the uh, request of caching only okay or, or uh, they offer the caching services only now the next thing is the next uh, role is sharepoint search server dedicated search servers are used in large organizations i have already talked about it that whenever you are dealing with millions and millions of documents uh, it is always recommended uh, and you are activating the search service that is the in content search service of your sharepoint then it is always recommended that you deploy a new application server and you add the search service in it while creating the form uh, whenever you, you are selecting the options uh, from sharepoint 2019 onwards it is giving you an option uh, that you only configure a search service uh, search server role in any environment okay 
now if your search server that is a sharepoint application server uh, of search service role uh, is separate and you are having uh, a, uh, you know uh, you are having you are just facing or uh, thinking about the future perception or chances of uh, database uh, load that is increasing because as soon as the crawlers start indexing the content or the documents they save all of its data in databases so your single database server that is handling the request of normal queries of the uh, of your clients are now fa is now facing an additional uh, query load queries load of search service as well because all your crawlers are uh, indexing the data and they are in, they are uh, doing iops on your database server so your database server will uh, have a huge load for that purpose uh, design what sharepoint designers do they separate the database server for search service so that all the uh, databases of exclusively search service that is the admin uh, query indexing many databases are created they are created in a separate database server so that your primary database server may have optimized load on it okay so in large organization it is always recommended that you separate the database server of for search as well now the next thing is that sharepoint search crawlers are to be carefully carefully configured for optimized results okay for example uh, you have already thousands or millions of documents that are uh, saved in different sites and libraries now you are activating the search service and in peak hours load peak load hours when your users are interacting with uh, the site you activate the search service the impact load will be will occur on your sharepoint application servers as well as the uh, database server what will happen your uh, your system may result in degraded performance so whenever you configure the search service uh, you go into the rules and exclude all the sites do indexing one by one or alternatively if you have a new site with many few documents then you can uh, you can uh, activate all the search crawls at once so it is very important to uh, carefully configure the crawl the crawlers now the next thing is sharepoint distributed cache server the ca uh, caching service that is the distributed cache service is so important uh, for increasing the performance of your system that microsoft recommends to uh, to create a dedicated search uh, cache server okay caching uh, you know by the name that caching is used for increasing the efficiency and reducing the load on the servers so distributed cache improves the page output performance all those uh, queries that are frequent that are very frequent what uh, the data uh, that is frequently very frequently being called from the database what sharepoint distributed cache server do it grabs that data and save it in its cache now next time whenever the user requests the data beside uh, in spite of going to the database the sharepoint cache service uh, entertains the user from its own memory so it greatly reduces the iops of your database server okay so it's basically used for maximizing the performance and reducing the iops on database server by deploying a sharepoint distributed cache server you will note you will notice a noticeable change in the load of your database server if you are already running in uh, running a uh, production farm and you are adding a new distributed cache server there now the next thing is that uh, you may have you may deploy a cache service in your existing wfe servers and the recommended that is recommended by microsoft for large organizations that you uh, deploy a separate server for uh, distributed caching